Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for two Facebook groups fans of Serif Software and the Affinity Designer and Photo Group. A few days ago a member of the Facebook group fans of Serif Software emailed me and asked me to look at a Photoshop tutorial which is this one here by F64 Academy about inverting color correction and there is a written instructions on how to do it but down here there is also the video which is well worth watching and he will explain this far better than I ever will but the Photoshop way of doing this is pretty much the same as it, it, you can do it in Affinity Photo so I was initially a bit sceptical about making a tutorial because I thought that you know they're so similar that there's very little difference. Um, probably the only difference really was um, doing the sort of clipping mask. Um, so I was initially was a bit trepidous about whether to make one, and then I thought, well, I've, I did do something a long time ago in Photo Plus which was Serif's PC-only uh, photo program before they made Affinity Photo. Uh, in that tutorial, what I was doing, I was helping to change the colour or the warmth or the tone of one image to help place it into another image to make up sort of montage. Um, so what I thought I'd do is I'd combine both of those tutorials to make one new tutorial, uh, tutorial. So first of all let's deal with the Photoshop tutorial that Murray White wanted to look at and it is basically about changing the color cast of an image if you've got the color cast wrong um, like I did in this picture which I took a long time ago I think about 2013 which I would like to think was the last time I made the mistake of not altering the white balance when taking a photograph. Um, but as you can see this picture was sort of very yellowy because I hadn't changed the colour cast for I think it was neon nights rather than I think I had it set on outdoors. Um, I know you can change the colour cast of an image by going to the HSL slider and sort of trying to work out doing it that way but this is sort of a slightly subtler way of doing it so first thing you need to do is to duplicate this image so I'll just right click on this layer here and come to duplicate you can do control and J or you can go up to the layer menu and do duplicate that way um, but I've duplicated that so what we want to do now is we want to reverse the colors on this so you come up to layer and you come to invert you can just press control and I but if you invert it it will change the colors to the opposite to what they were basically that may not be technically true but that's how I look at it so once you have that we now want to select an average color of all the colors that are present in this version of the image. And to do that you come up to filters, blur and average and it will blur that image in the average color that was available. So all you need to do then is to change the blending mode from this from normal down to soft light. So as you can see I've already taken a, a, away a lot of that yellow um, colour that was in the original. If I turn that off and turn that back on again. So what I now want to do is to add in the HSL adjustment and so I'll click on this adjustment icon down here select HSL now at this point 
the HSO adjustment is above the average blur layer but I want it to be part of the average blur layer rather than above it so what I'm going to this is where the difference from the Photoshop tutorial was where they sort of clipped it on all I need to do here is if I click on the logo and keep the button pressed and drag it down so that we get a, a blue line that comes across here but only goes as far as the um, the edge of the icons that will make it part of this layer. If the blue line comes all the way to the end it will be in the same layer but in between these two layers. So I'll just click and drag until that blue line appears and then that will make that clipped to the blue uh, uh, average blue blur layer. So now I can make some adjustments so I can just raise the saturation, maybe lower the luminosity a bit. That's, that's not too bad. So I can just click on the X to drop that, uh, to remove that. Now the only thing is, and on my particular image, it may not happen on an image that you're going to use it on. It has sort of lost a lot of its sort of detail and contrast. So I will stick on uh, having this layer selected because I'm going to add a contrast and brightness adjustment, but it will still be just part and clipped to the background layer above. So I'll come up to brightness and contrast adjustment. So you can see it is still part of this little group. So I can alter the contrast and the brightness to suit my personal tastes. There we go, I think that will do. So if I turn this little group off now that's where it started like with a much yellower tinge and it is now a lot less yellow now because these are adjustments within this group you can always come back and alter anything to however you want it if you want to refine that choice a little bit more So you're not restricted to just sticking with how you left it. You can always go back and adjust things. So let me just turn it off again. So that's a bit better. I've taken a sort of knocked back a lot of that yellow and it looks more like it was a more natural in a daylight type setting. So hopefully that covers, as best as I can, the F64 tutorial. Now one slight adjustment um, that I will do is I will show you this picture here, which I got from pixabay.com. Now this one here, there's an awful lot of blur happening here because of the bright lights of the city. So we will do a similar thing with this. So if I duplicate this and then layer invert and then filter blur average and then change that to soft light. Add the HSL adjustment click and drag it down to clip it into that layer. If I drop the luminosity of this right the way down, I'm not going to touch the saturation shift this time, but as you can see it has lost a lot of that blur from the neon lights 
and it's just left you with a, a much crisper nighttime image. Now, to be perfectly honest, I could have just done this, I would imagine, by just adding a black, a solid black layer. Because if I turn that off, that is what we've got, a solid black layer. Um, so if you want to get rid of a neon blur in a picture, nighttime picture like this one, you could just add a black layer and change the blending mode to soft light and then add a HSL adjustment. Um, sorry, if it's already a black layer you don't need to do that, but you can do it this way if you want. This does also give you the option doing it this way if you want to still keep a little bit of that blur for whatever reason you have that adjustment option available and as you can see changing the saturation has absolutely no effect whatsoever basically because it's black so there are the two ways that you can use the F64 Academy's tutorial adapted for Affinity Photo. Now let's look at adapting the tutorial that I made for Photo Plus and for this I'm going to use this greeny blue texture uh, of these wooden slats which I got from pixabay.com and this picture of me at Walton where I live. Now this picture here is taken on a fairly sunny day and all the colours are quite warm whereas this background is obviously a much cooler colder image so if I wanted to make a montage on this although it would work quite well a picture of me on that background it would look a slightly odd because my image would be warmer and the background would be cooler so we are going to adapt that slightly so first of all I need to select the picture of me so I'm going to use the selection brushes quicker you could use other selection means but for the quickness of this video I'm just going to use this tool Let me lower the brush size down I'm only doing a rough selection. There we go, I think that's everything. That will do. I'll just refine that slightly by about one pixel. And then apply. So I have that selection of me, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to press Ctrl and J to put that selection on a new layer so I'll press Control and D to get rid of the selection area and if I turn off the background that is the selection of me on a single layer and all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click that and come down to copy come to my background layer and then edit and paste I'll use the move tool just to bring this into the middle a bit more. I'm not going to bother resizing it, but if I was doing a montage I probably would resize it so I could add other pictures. But as you can see that is a much warmer image than the background and I want to sort of get them to sort of look like they were taken at the same time rather than at different times. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this background layer I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to move this layer above the image of myself like so and then we're going to use a similar sort of trick that we used in the, the other part of this tutorial but I'm not going to invert the image this time I'm just going to come to filters blur average which gives me the average color of that image and like before I'm going to click on the 
icon for this layer and drag it and make it clipped to this image of myself so it is only affecting this image of me rather than the background so all I need to do now is change the blending mode to soft light and that is a picture of me that has been toned down to look a lot cooler than it was before and again I can add the HSL adjustment within that little group and I can tone down that luminosity a bit and maybe even the colour a little bit just to keep it looking a much cooler image and it does sort of fit better with the cooler background I mean, obviously you could have done this in reverse you could have if you had a warm background and a cool image you could have used the warmth of the background to change the cooler image into a warmer image so hopefully between those two slight variations on the same theme one where you do invert the image and one where you don't invert the image that you're using for the average blur um, you can adapt either of those options for whatever project you have in mind so I'm hoping that covers Murray White's request so thank you for watching and goodbye